this is how I'm going to uh, insert a M3 pivot ball into this toy grade arm. Drill the hole so it's close to the diameter of this pivot ball. So we're going to attempt to do this without breaking this end. If we break this end, there is another way we could do this. Um, now, I'm going to attempt to heat up the pivot ball, not too hot, with a pencil torch. Up one more time, and we'll let it sit and cool. And hopefully, we'll be in position. We'll be good to go. Make sure it's still going to move. So far, so good. Alright, we know it ain't coming out that side. Still a little warm. Alright. Not too shabby. And we'll let that cool. Alright, so what I'm going to do here is attempt to clean this up, just make some more clearance, and gain us some more articulation. Alright, other than cleaning it up and making it look pretty, I think we did it. So we just took a toy grade arm, and eh, kind of made it a hobby grade. All right, let's put it on the car. Okay, more or less an update on this HB. Uh, some of the parts came in, so I was able to get something done. I found with um, using this MOA axle, I had to space out this link. In order to, uh, I used two m4 nuts in order to get it to be square with the body it may not be perfect but it, it's a little better now and it helped uh, no binding and uh, stuff like that it happens to be an rs10 red cat uh, crawler axle you can make any moa axle work and i did fit the stock motor with this axle. Just had to carefully, very carefully drill two holes so it would fit it. So here's what was done. I used uh, M3 pivot balls and inserted them into the uh, the HB factory links because I, I kind of like the way they looked so and only did it on one end the other end is still stock and it seems to articulate a little better uh, these are pivot balls I went ahead and I put uh, pivot balls into the shocks and I did redo those shocks so there was absolutely no sticking at all um, the gluing the plastic on the nail I was paranoid about it uh, breaking off. Uh, that never happened, but I can see that happening later on. Uh, what I did was uh, I reground the head of the nails. Um, I tapered the top and the bottom and made it 
smaller than that 5 16 uh, nylon piece that I put on it. I did cut new 5 16 nylon pieces. Um, I put them on top of the nail. I took the pencil torch, heated the nail till it uh, was melting the plastic, pushed the plastic down over the nail and pushed the plastic around the nail to help hold it on a little better. And then cleaned it up with the Dremel uh, so it would move real nice in the shock, whatever. So um, originally I had the shock in this hole on the link. Um, it was okay, but I wanted to jack it up a little higher, so we got a little more height out of it. I moved it here, and uh, this seems to be just fine. So in all, you're going to end up using six M3 pivot balls, uh, two for the shocks, four for the uh, bottom and the upper links to get them to actually uh, to fit this axle and uh, it'll make it articulate even better so and we did gain about a quarter of an inch on the articulation so um, all I'm missing is the servo so I'm going to waterproof another servo so when I'm done with this uh, running wise it'll end up It'll be able uh, to do four-wheel steer, rear wheel, front wheel, uh, crab walk, whatever. So that'll be pretty cool. That's a major upgrade to this toy. Which I almost want to not call it a toy <laughs> anymore. All right, so anyway. Now to finish the build, I'm still waiting on parts. Um, just got to have patience. Um, so what I'm going to put in this, uh, it'll be here soon enough, uh, GT Power uh, Sound and Light. I think that'll be pretty awesome. 